Hello, my name is Tony Restivo, and this is my presentation on art and war. In times of war, it is hard to find the light at the end of the tunnel. Those involved, either fighting or trapped in the horrors of war, never come out the other side the same person. When it comes to art, we're able to see artists use their talent and power to spread messages for good through awareness, support, and relief, or bad through propaganda. It is easy to see the terrible effects war has on our society through pieces of art by artists that experience these effects firsthand. The first piece I will discuss comes from the famous Spanish artist Pablo Picasso. Picasso, born October 25th, 1881, was a Spanish artist who has spent most of his adult life in France creating his infamous style of painting, Cubism. To understand Picasso's art, you must first understand Cubism. According to the Metropolitan Museum of Art's essay on Cubism, written by Sabine Rewald, we learn that Cubism was one of the most influential visual art styles of the early 20th century. It was created by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque in Paris between 1907 and 1914. The Cubist painters rejected the inherited concept that art should copy nature, or that artists should adopt the traditional techniques of perspective, modeling, and foreshortening. They wanted instead to emphasize the two-dimensionality of the canvas, so they reduced and fractured objects into geometric forms, and then realigned these within a shallow, relief-like space. Going back to Picasso's personal life, he left Spain for the first time in 1900, and would eventually begin full residency in France in 1904. Shocked and terrified by the cruel horrors of the Spanish Civil War, Picasso felt like he was trapped in France while his home country was being war-torn by his country of residence. He was unable to return home, and his experience with the war led him to creating one of his most famous pieces, Guernica, 1937. This painted mural piece, Guernica, is currently exhibited in the Museo Reina Sofia in Madrid and was accessed on the museum's website. Paloma Esteban Leal, an author curated to create a description of the piece on the website, explains, an accurate depiction of a cruel, dramatic situation. Guernica was created to be part of the Spanish Pavilion at the International Exposition in Paris in 1937. Pablo Picasso's motivation for painting the scene in this great work was the news of the German aerial bombing of the Basque town whose name the piece bears, which the artist had seen in the dramatic photographs published in various periodicals, including the French newspaper Le Humanité. Despite that, neither the studies nor the finished picture contain a single allusion to a specific event, constituting instead a generic plea against the barbarity and terror of war. I believe the work is culturally significant because it highlights the tragedy of war, specifically the Spanish Civil War in this case, and offers future forewarnings to society about eventual wars to come in the future. As we know, World War II followed this quickly after. In America, we are constantly shown propaganda supporting wars to brainwash our society into blindly supporting our country's efforts in these tragic horrors. Pieces like this give us insight into the truce of war and help us understand the negative effects war has on our world around us. Though the usage of cubism creates a surreal aspect for the piece, we are still able to derive the horrors of the lack of color, usage of white and gray and black light, and the cubist lining of the figures sending the message of awareness of the tragedy of war and support for the anti-war movement. First, the lack of color in the piece creates a monochromatic melancholic scene, allowing us to focus directly on the figures shown in the tragedy. The overall darkness of the scene depicts the dark and brutal reality of war. The cubist figures are depicted in a way to dramatize in extremities the pain that the civilians are in. We see a figure on the right, screaming to the sky, reaching up, trying to escape. Under that, a figure kneels and moves swiftly, trying to escape as well. In the middle, a figure is peeking their arm and head through the window, holding a candle in the middle of the scene, emitting as much white light as it can, symbolizing those trying to offer support and refuge for those tormented by the conflicts. We then see multiple figures on the left screaming to the air, trapped and crushed on the ground by the tyranny of the attackers. Finally, we see a horse-slash-bull-like figure with horns, which to me symbolizes the devil, a symbol of pain, suffering, and torment, which are the only things war causes in regards to the messages of painting. As I've already talked about, 
This painting has had an extensive cultural significance in the anti-war movement and influence on our society in opening our eyes to the brutality of war. I will show you one direct influence this painting has had on another artist in the next piece. The second piece I will discuss comes from the American painter Leon Golub. Born in 1922 in Chicago, Golub would go on to experience several horrifying wars throughout his lifetime. We learn from a biography on Golub from the art story that he was the son of Jewish immigrants from Ukraine and Lithuania. In his teen and early adult years, Golub lived through the Second World War, having to learn about the atrocities of fellow Jewish people in the Holocaust during that time. This potentially had a drastic effect on the course of his life and career, where he would go on to create several pieces in support of the anti-war movement, especially the Vietnam War. In addition, in the biography, we also learned that, while a student in 1939, he saw Pablo Picasso's Guernica at the Chicago Arts Club. This image made a great impact on the young artist and powered his passion towards a highly political and socially engaged creative vision. As he explained, quote, Guernica was like that. It was an art object that dealt with our world, okay? It was interested in seeing what the world looked like and was to a certain extent politically aware. Here, we are able to see the direct influence that the last piece had on Golub, and we will see that influence in his piece, Vietnam II, 1973. The three meter high and 12 meter long acrylic painting on canvas mural, Vietnam II, is currently not on exhibition, but was previously displayed in the Smithsonian American Art Museum and the Tate Museum, and was accessed online from the Tate Institution in England. From the Tate summary of the piece, curated by Rachel Taylor, we learn that it belongs to a series of three large-scale works on the subject of the Vietnam War the artist made between 1972 and 1974. The paintings were motivated in part by the American presidential election of 1972, which saw Richard Nixon soundly defeating the anti-war platform of George McGovern. Golub had adopted an active stance against the Vietnam conflict for almost a decade at the time these works were made. He joined the anti-war group Artists and Writers protest on his return to the United States in 1964 after living for several years in Europe. However, until this series, he had not directly addressed con contemporary issues in his work. The Vietnam paintings marked a move in Golub's work from more ambiguous, classically inspired images of masculinity and power to a more pointed and abrasive political engagement with subject matter which has continued in his work to the present day. I believe the cultural significance of this piece is quite apparent, as it comments on the horrific war in Vietnam at the time that many believed the American forces had no right to partake in. The era of the Vietnam War was one of the most prevalent moments in history where the anti-war movement rapidly spread. This piece helped give our society an understanding on the brutality of what was happening in Vietnam and the atrocious torment US forces were forcing on civilians in the area. Looking at the massive painting, we are able to see this brutality shown in the color, light, and lines of the piece. The left side depicts the American forces using a dark green similar to their true colors, but also using a mix of dark reds, blacks, and oranges, and harsh brass brush strokes, creating a sense of gross, horrifying flesh on the soldiers. I believe this was done to create the meaning of the American forces being the villains in the situation, making their flesh look undistinctable and almost zombie-like symbolizing their terror in the war. The right side depicts the innocent lives of civilians trapped in the war efforts, depicted with lighter browns, whites, and blacks, and more distinct and cleaner brush strokes, which can be seen as a symbol for their innocence and purity in comparison to the brutal forces of torment and war on the other side. In addition, a dark smoke-like cloud looms over them, which could be a symbol of the darkness being brought upon them from the opposing side. In conclusion, I believe that both of these pieces, and many like these, bring light onto the tragedy and horrors of war, and help us understand the truths going on, being the lies of propaganda and bloodless leadership.